next console generation is only a few months away, and despite the ongoing pandemic, it looks like both the PS5 and the Xbox Series X are still set to hit the shelves on schedule during the 2020 holiday season. With that time of the year drawing ever closer, we've been steadily learning more and more about each console, which naturally led to comparing everything from hardware specs and exclusive games to backward compatibility. Next on the chopping block are the controllers. As Sony recently unveiled the DualShock 5, <coughs> we mean the DualShock Sense controller, and that's why in today's video we'll be taking a look at both Sony's and Microsoft's new controllers with regards to the designs, features and improvements to see which one is shaping up to be the best next-gen controller. So without any further ado, let's begin. In the left corner, weighing it at an undisclosed amount, we have the Xbox Series X controller. At first glance, it may be hard to altogether distinguish it from the Xbox One controller, and that's because Microsoft has changed very little about it. The if it ain't broke, don't fix it design philosophy has been taken to its extreme with this controller, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. The Xbox One controller is one of the best controllers ever made. So obviously, there's no need to reinvent the wheel here. Instead, Microsoft has retained the strengths of their previous controller while improving upon its weaknesses. We've already stated in other videos that the biggest weakness of the Xbox One controller is the dreaded D-pad, which is troublesome at best and sometimes deemed unfit for platformers and fighting games. In an attempt to fix this issue, the D-pad of the Series X controller now has a concave dish design similar to the standard D-pad cap on the Xbox One Elite controller. This change alone is bound to make the controller more suitable for accurate diagonal input, which will make the two genres mentioned more enjoyable to play. But that's not all that was changed. There are also some small tweaks added to the new controller just for good measure. For example, the triggers were redesigned to be more ergonomic and tactile. And this is where we can see how trying to fix something that already works can in fact be a bad thing. The Xbox One controller may easily be the most comfortable controller ever. So some fans will likely be displeased with Microsoft's decision to shrink it down a bit. The idea here is that the old controller was too large for some. And as Ryan Whitaker stated in a recent interview, the goal with the new controller is to make it suitable for the hands of the average eight-year-old. Microsoft hopes that this will make the controller more comfortable for a wider audience, but it may put off the older fans who swear by the size and weight of the Xbox One controller. Aside from this, there are only two minor changes left to cover. Firstly, there's now finally a share button, which we consider a big plus as it finally lets the players capture screenshots and videos without having to go through the on-screen menus. And secondly, the new controller has a USB-C port on the back for wired connectivity and charging. This is, of course, if you decide to buy the rechargeable batteries, as the controller will still ship with the disposable AA batteries, which feels so out of place for a console coming out in 2020 that we can't even wrap our heads around it. All in all, the Series X controller seems like the natural evolution of the previous controller, capitalizing on what worked while attempting to fix its major weaknesses. So long as it doesn't end up being less comfortable to use than the Xbox One controller, we won't have anything to complain about, aside from the whole battery situation. And in the right corner, we have the new DualSense controller. The reveal of the new Sony controller has been full of surprises, with the rebranding seen as one of the most unexpected additions. The DualShock moniker has been around since the very first PlayStation, and much like the outward appearance of the controllers themselves, we didn't expect Sony to make any major departures from its firmly established legacy. As soon as the DualShock 4 was announced, fans were already expecting the DualShock 5 to be its successor. So why call it the DualSense controller? Okay, so it actually makes a lot of sense if you think about it. The DualShock is not a random name spat out by some cool tech name generator. The name was adopted when Sony introduced the Rumble engine to their controllers for the first time. The name DualShock stemmed from the fact that this controller had 
two rumble engines. But now that the rumble engines are getting replaced by the more accurate haptic feedback, it makes sense to abandon the DualShock name and replace it with something contextually appropriate. This is made all the more crucial given how monumental of an addition this haptic feedback feature is supposed to be. It promises to endow gaming with a sense of precise, tactile feedback like never before. This is a huge step forward for the new controller, so DualSense truly is the most fitting name. However, it remains to be seen whether this feature will actually leave as big a mark on gaming as Sony claims it will. Sony has already shown that it's not afraid to add new and exciting features to their controllers with the DualShock 4. However, its touchpad and mono speaker felt more like gimmicks than anything else, as they were only experimented with by some first-party developers. We're holding out hope that this haptic feedback will have a bright future in most PS4 titles, but once again, it's the developers who decide whether this feature will be as widely implemented as Sony wants it to be, or mostly left by the wayside like the touchpad. Aside from this, the most notable new features include the adaptive triggers, a built-in microphone, and a new create button. Sony is still keeping its cards close to its chest with regards to the create button, but judging by the name, it's safe to assume that it will allow players to edit their screenshots and gameplay footage on the fly instead of just capturing it. The built-in microphone is there to facilitate communication in online games without the need of a dedicated headset. And as for the adaptive triggers, they apparently offer varying degrees of resistance depending on the in-game situation, so if you're charging a bow shot, you should be able to feel something tantamount to the bowstring tightening. However, the biggest change comes in the outward design of the DualSense controller. Thus far, all of the PlayStation controllers have looked fairly similar, even with DualShock 4, which had introduced some of the biggest appearance changes until now, still looked and felt like a Sony PlayStation controller. By contrast, the DualSense feels more like an aftermarket ripoff than a proper Sony controller. Sure, it's still got the same button layout and the touchpad, but the shape is completely different. If we were just to invert the D-pad with the left analog stick, we're sure many would mistake it for the new Xbox controller at first glance. So how do they make the DualSense feel more distinctly different than the Xbox controllers that came before it? They slap on a black and white color scheme, of course. At least that's why we think Sony went with this look. Overall, the reception has been… a mixed bag. Some seem to love it, others hate it. No one is left feeling indifferent. As for us, we're just excited by the prospect of the controller feeling even more comfortable thanks to the Xbox's shape. But something about the colors just rubs us the wrong way, honestly. Perhaps it'll grow on us. Only time will tell. In any case, the DualSense controller is shaping up to be one of the most feature-rich controllers ever to be released, but we'll just have to wait and see how many of those features will have a tangible impact on the way we play games. So, now that we've met the contestants, let's evaluate how well they handled themselves in a caged deathmatch. The rules are simple. There will be five rounds, with each round focused on only one aspect of the controllers. Judge, ring the bell. The first round will be decided by who has the better design and ergonomics. Both contestants are eagerly strutting their stuff, but our eyes just keep gravitating towards the Series X controller. Yes, it feels similar to its predecessor, but that's because the predecessor already had a highly efficient design. There's just something elegant about its simple, all-black exterior and the familiar shape. Whether or not it will prove to surpass the Xbox One controller is left to be seen. But in any case, it's bound to be a comfortable controller that users will enjoy. Conversely, the DualSense controller just feels funky, weird, as if an unknown last-minute substitute has entered the ring instead of the DualShock 5 controller we were all expecting. Under the hood, the DualSense has us all giddy and excited, but we just aren't fans of the new design. This mostly has to do with the two-tone color scheme that just feels weird. Since Sony is unlikely to change the final design at this point, we just have to crown the Xbox controller as the undisputed winner of this round, at least until Sony gives us an all-black and all-white variant of the DualSense, which it most certainly will. 
But look at this, folks. Now the two controllers are flexing their triggers and clicking their D-pads. As far as the input is concerned, these are the buttons that have received the biggest changes. Both controllers now offer adaptive triggers with haptic feedback, but the Xbox controllers have always been known to have more comfortable triggers. And this time around, they feature a textured surface that'll hopefully make them even better. Seeing how the shapes and sizes of the triggers aren't being changed in any way on either team, we expect the Series X controller to inherit the King of Triggers crown. When it comes to the D-pad, however, the contestants seem much more evenly matched. Xbox has always trailed decidedly behind Sony with regards to their D-pad, but now that the Series X controller is set to feature a concave dish, the playing field is starting to look more even. Our gut feeling is telling us that the DualSense will still be the controller you're gonna want if you're big on fighting games and platformers, but we'll refrain from making any definitive claims until we've had the opportunity to test both of the controllers. Sony typically tends to pull ahead when it comes to the non-essential features, which often ends up not mattering since not everything that's being put on display actually ends up being relevant for gameplay. But we strongly feel that the gyroscope is the exception here. This feature is incredibly handy for aiding with precise camera movements as it helps bring the level of control you have closer to what you could achieve with the mouse on a PC. The DualSense is set to reprise this feature, but so far there's been no word about the Series X controller having it as well. As we've already stated, the Series X controller is likely going to have better triggers than the DualSense controller, making the Xbox that tiny bit preferable for shooters. But without the gyroscope, your aiming simply won't be as precise. Once again, it may be that the Series X controller does have this feature, but that it hasn't been revealed yet. We'd love to see this since it's such a convenient tool to have at your disposal, despite not being essential in any way. And continuing the trend of Sony offering features that are nowhere to be found on the new Xbox controller, we have to look at the built-in microphone. As we've said, this is bound to be a handy tool for online multiplayer communication, but it's easy to imagine how it could prove annoying. It's hard to imagine the microphone quality being particularly high, so if we add loud ambient noise to the mix, we get a recipe for disaster. We don't even want to think about how unpredictably loud the gaming environments of the people you match up against in online multiplayer could get. We're talking vacuum cleaners, AC, dogs barking, the whole package. On the other hand, if developers can integrate this feature into the gameplay in cool and unique ways, then it's just one more thing that's going to help the PS5 controller get ahead in this fight. The PS5 is also said to have voice controls and the built-in microphone will make it so that everyone can get full access to this feature. So while the actual impact this will have in the console war is dubious at best, we still can't deny the inherent potential for greatness that we see. Up next, we have to look at endurance. How long can each of our contestants stay in the ring before needing a break to recharge? The situation here is the same as it's ever been in the console war between Sony and Microsoft. Sony makes their controllers with built-in batteries, placing convenience as its top priority. Microsoft, on the other hand, still tends to ship its controllers with user-replaceable batteries. Now, as much as we're personally against the user-replaceable approach, it does offer some benefits. All batteries degrade over time, so the battery life on your DualSense controller isn't going to be as long several years into the console generation as it was when you first booted the console up. Having the ability to change the batteries helps mitigate this issue, but it does cost more. If the Series X controller shipped with replaceable batteries out of the box, then it would be a different story. But as things stand, we're leaning towards the DualSense controller on this one. The bell rings as the contest comes to a close. How do our contestants fare after these five rounds of combat? In terms of the design and basic features, the score leans in the Series X controller's favor. The familiar design has been proved to be effective, and if the improved D-pad proves competitive, we can easily see it having a stronger base than the DualSense controller. However, in terms of adding something extra to the overall experience and trying to innovate, Sony is miles ahead of Microsoft. The list of features that the DualSense controller has that the Series X controller doesn't is just vast. 
and with many of these promising to affect the gameplay in meaningful ways, we feel that the controllers are going to play a more prominent role in the outcome of the console war than they ever have before. As for the battery solution, it's really just down to the preference. We prefer the approach Sony is taking, but we're neither able nor willing to change anyone's mind if they're firmly on the Microsoft side of things. Overall, both controllers look amazing and are bound to be amazing. But the DualSense controller just has us more excited, whereas the Series X controller feels like more of the same. For that reason, we are giving the DualSense a slight edge here. In any case, we hope you found this video helpful and our assessment fair. If you have, let us know by liking the video and sharing it with your friends. And if you want to see more videos like this one, subscribe to our channel and click the bell icon to enable notifications. Also, we're dying to hear what the comment section has to say about this. Are you as excited as we are about the wealth of new features offered by the DualSense controller? Or do you think that the Series X controller has got this one in the bag with its reliably good design and strong core? Whatever it is, let us know in the comments below. And in the meantime, May your games be fun and your losses few. And as always, we'll see you next time on Gaming Scan.